All right, hello everyone. Uh, welcome to the first MAE 152 virtual discussion. I'm sorry I couldn't be there today, but I thought I'd try to make this and see if I can help you out with the NASTRAM patch run homework, although I don't have a lot of experience with it. But here we go. So first thing we wanna do is open up Patran. And I recommend before we start to have the strut file already in a folder. Now, if you use the computer lab folders, there's already a folder in the C drive called scratch, which it seems like that's where all the files end up. Uh, for me, I put them in the msc.software folder. I made a new folder. Um, in this one, it's called msc files, but you could call it runs or you could call it scratch if you want. But I'd recommend putting the strut file the XMT file that you down, download from Canvas into this folder. It'll make things a lot easier. All right, so once it's in there, let's go ahead and open up Patran, and then we'll open up a new file. So this one I also like to go make sure where I know it's at because the default is just Windows temp, and it will be better to be able to trace it down. So I go back into the C drive for me, and I will go to the MSC software, MSC files, and I'll put it in here. This one I'm going to call strut. Okay, so next thing we wanna do is upload the file. So what we're going to do is go to File, Import, and we're going to find Strut, press Apply. All right, we get this uh, module to help us upload it, press OK, and we should see the Strut so up, show up. I'm gonna go back to Home, press ISO 2, and we should see it in a nice view. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is go ahead and we're going to do the meshing. So we'll go to mesh, solid mesh, that's this button right here, click solid mesh. We're going to select the solid body. And in this case, we're going to deselect automatic calculation of the global edge length and do 0.5. And we will press apply. All right, so we should see a preview of the mesh. If you don't see this show up, um, possibly you have not selected the solid body or maybe this number is the wrong one. So just double check both of those. Okay, the next thing we want to do is go over here to the loads and boundary conditions. And the first thing we're going to do is constrain it. So we'll go to displacement constraint and we're gonna go input data. So for translations, we want zero comma, zero comma, zero. Press okay. All right, now we have to be really careful with the application region. This filter bar right here is very important and it will be to your benefit to make sure you select the right filter. In this case, what I'm going to do is select this one that says surface or face, and then I'm gonna zoom in. Now you have to be really careful here because I'm trying to select this inner face right here, but depending on where I hover the mouse, it may select something that I think is that face, but it's actually selecting maybe the backside and this causes some problems. So I have to be really careful in this view that I have currently, if I hover over it, I can see the edge right here and the edge right here, basically the boundaries of that face turn red. So it's some indication that I'm selecting the correct face. So I'm gonna go ahead and press okay, or click it and then say add, and then say okay. And once we, once we see this boundary condition after we apply it, then we should have a little better intuition um, if we got the right one. So everything looks good, I'm going to press apply. All right, I need to name it, forgot about that. So we're gonna call this one hub cylinder. All right, then press apply. There we go. Okay, so now we see it here. Now it's a little hard to distinguish if we got the right thing, but it is grabbing the edges of that face and this one is constraining it in all three directions. Okay, so next thing we're going to do is apply a load. So we're gonna to go to total load, which is up here, right? And we want to go to input data the total load is zero comma negative 70, 80 comma zero. So it's gonna put a force downwards at that magnitude. Press okay. All right, then application region. We want to be very careful here. I've seen some trouble before if we don't select the right filter. So the default filter right here says free face of a solid. And this seemed to cause some trouble. So I use this filter right here that says face of a solid. Select that filter. Now, this one's a little hard to see, but there's a dish inside this part of the strut, and we want to grab that face right there. And then once again, I can kind of see the boundary show up uh, in red to indicate that I'm grabbing the right face. Press okay, 
press add and then okay. And now once we press apply, oh, I better name it again. This is going to be landing load. Once we press apply, we should see some indication that we have the correct number in the right orientation. All right, so that looks good. Next thing we want to do is select a material. So we're going to go to properties, isotropic, right? Material name will be steel. Input properties, the elastic modulus is 30 E6. Poisson's ratio is 0.3. Press OK. All right, and then we'll press apply. All right, the next thing we do is go up here in the same menu and go to solid. So we select solid, All right? Property name will be strut. And then for input properties, we're going to go to this menu. We don't have to type in anything again. What we'll do is click this little button right here. And since we've already made steel, select steel, shows up in here, press OK. All right. And then we will go ahead. And for application region, we're just going to select the whole body, press add. We should see solid one show up in the application region and press OK and then apply. All right, so we wanna go down our checklist. We have the geometry imported correctly, it's meshed. We have the boundary conditions and the load applied and we have a material. So we're ready for the analysis. We go to the analysis tab, all right? Then what we wanna do is go to analysis deck. Select analysis deck and then we will press apply. And then look down here to see if you get any error messages or anything looks um, that catches your attention. For example, here it says, warning, uh, the Patran license will expire in 10 days. So anything that catches your attention. But so far it looks good. All right, at this point we're done with Patran. So we're going to minimize this. And we're going to make sure that in our folder where all of this showed up, that we see um, a strut dot BDF. So if we don't see that, we want to go see if something has happened. So I'm going to go back here and take a look, make sure. Okay, so I just need to refresh the folder. There it is, strut.bdf. So we're good. That means it's time to start up Nashtran. So start up Nashtran. It's going to immediately ask you for a file, which if you have the same folder here, it's easy to find, strut.bdf. Select that and press open. All right. And then this little bar shows up and you just wanna press run. Now, as soon as you do that, it starts running in the background and I like to open up this monitor to take a look and see what happened. So Nashtran has started. We wait just a few seconds and it should run. And now if you're using this on the school computers, this is where people seem to have a little bit of a problem. So Nashtran starts running and then right near the end, it says, Error has encountered, Nashtran must close. Now, when I did this on the school computers, I got the same problem. And when I looked in the folder, I didn't find the XDB uh, file, file. Now doing this on my own computer, I also had a similar problem. I didn't get the error message that said Nashtran needs to close, but I did get the error with, the, with no XBD file in my folder. And we tried to solve this. I'm not sure what's happening, however, I do have this file called H5. This is also an analysis file. And on the school computers, even though I get the error message with Nastran that says it must close, right before it shuts down, it actually generates this H5 file, which seems to be a good enough file for us to complete this assignment with uh, and, and do a full analysis. So what I do is if I see this in my folder, I want to open up Patran again. And under the analysis tab, Instead of selecting go search for an XDB file, I use the button next to it that says look for an HDF5 file or H5 file. So I press that and then over in the menu, I say select results file and you can see it shows up right here, strut.h5. So I select strut.h5, press OK, right? And then apply. Now that that's loaded in, I'm going to go to the results tab and I should see some options here for me to determine what I want to look at. So I'm going to select, in this case, the stress tensor, von Mises stress, and then I'm going to look at displacement uh, in terms of translation. And then I press apply. And we should see it show up with the stress map, and we're able to do our analysis. 
And in that H5 file, we have plenty of other options. So for example, we could say, I want to see an animation. What I want to see an animation of the deformation ramp, press apply. And we can see we can get an animation of the deformation. If we want, we can slow it down. So this is all very similar to the SOLIDWORKS that we're, we're used to. Um, and you can see here that even without the XDB file, this H5 file has all the information that we need. So I hope this helps. The inadequate constraints problem is very similar. I'm not going to open it up on this one, but I just want to give you a word of warning. If you are doing the um, an inadequate constraints and you don't see anything show up, some people have been saying they have this problem. What it seems to be the case is that if you don't put enough constraints, it won't even run. And this is part of the assignment is to look at the inadequate constraints and it shows you one of the fatal errors in the log file in the FO6 in the log file basically says that it's under constraint. So if it's not running and giving you even the H5 file, go double check that you have adequate constraints because in that part of the assignment after you do the assignment with inadequate constraints, it tells you to go back and add one more constraint and then it is constrained enough to run and you'll get a similar analysis. So go ahead and give that a try, see if that works, and if there's any questions, let me know. Thank you.